Welcome to another Essential RC project this time. Um, so I was getting a little bit bored and thought, hey, time for a new project. Had a look around online and came across a 3D printed aircraft. Um, now I've never seen a 3D printed aircraft before. I've got no idea how they're gonna fly, but it looked cool and I thought, let's give this a go. So uh, I had a look around, found a company called Eclipson Aircraft. Um, now these guys, they design planes to be printed. So as opposed to going online, getting a, a 3D model of a plane and printing it and then adapting it to, to fly it RC, it prints everything you need to make it RC. And you can print pretty much every component of the aircraft. So this was really cool. They had an aircraft called a Stream, which I really like the look of, uh, which you can see now. And uh, I thought, wait, well, I'll contact these guys. It wasn't quite available yet, and I, I think by the time this video goes out, it's probably still not available, maybe another week or two. Um, but they sent me the drawings uh, after a quick chat and uh, I got printing. So um, let's see how it goes. Let's do some printing. OK, so here we are inside of the 3D printing software. So this is free software that you can download off the Internet and it works with pretty much every 3D printer on the market. And it's quite a common uh, piece of software that everybody uses, Ultimaker Cura. Uh, I'd suggest using this just because so many people use it. And if you have any problems, then there's plenty of support available for it. Here we have all of the parameters that we enter or how we want to print the device. Um, if we go now to the files that we got sent from our friends over at Eclipson Aircraft, you will see that there's quite a few files here. Uh, now we'll start with the first one, the fuselage, or the front of the fuselage I should say, um, and now you can see that's dropped it into here. What we do is we press slice down the bottom. Uh, and then that will now create a pattern that the printer prints from. So uh, the, the actual printer has no, it, it doesn't know a 3D object. Um, it, you have to have to do this slicing process. Um, and what that does, you'll see here, you can actually see if I zoom in a little bit, um, how the printer will print this particular part. So you can actually watch in, in real time almost how how this is going to print. Um, and you can see there the layers being built up. So, as you can see, this is how it will print that part of the uh, that part of the aircraft, and working its way up to the top. So, quite cool to watch it being made up like this. This is exactly how it did print it for me. Um, so, really impressed with this. All of these settings here are included from uh, from the guys over at Eclipson, so there's no you, you don't need to worry about what print speed do I print at, what thickness, how many layers, etc., etc. You can uh, you can just enter the details that they give you. I've created some presets because there are two or three different variants of the setting depending what part you print. So there we go. Um, that's uh, one of the parts, and uh, now you will see the actual first part printing. So here you can see part of the rear fuselage being printed in the time lapse. Uh, this took approximately five hours, so uh, these parts do take a little while to print. Um, but uh, you you can just go out and leave it going. I, I didn't watch over it or anything. Uh, and here we have uh, part of the vertical stabilizer uh, right at the back of the plane being printed now. Again, really simple to uh, to get these things to print, so um, you can do it if you've never done it before. It's it's certainly nothing uh, nothing scary. Wow, that was a bit of a marathon. It's taken about forty eight hours of non stop printing to get to this point. So it's certainly not the quickest process in the world, um, but it's it's been a bit of an adventure. I'm quite pleased with how it's it's turned out in terms of quality. Um, partly thanks to the guys over at Eclipse and Airplanes, they give you a cheat sheet for the settings. So different parts of the aircraft you print at different, uh, not different qualities, but different settings. So for example, a wing, it only has one layer uh, of uh, material thick, whereas something like the spinner here, it's four layers thick. So this is extremely rigid, I can't compress this but this has a little tiny bit of flex to it um, kind of like a, a covered wing um, back in the day so yeah uh, really impressed with how it's turned out the design is definitely really clever on this aircraft so if the camera comes in a little bit you will see here um, that there are channels down inside the fuselage where all of your control rods go 
and then the control rods peek out and you connect them to the control surface. So really nice touch that they've thought of putting all of this inside. You can also see down inside the fuselage here, again, these channels continue to where the servos are gonna be mounted and you have some structural supports internally for where the wing is going to bolt on. So really impressed with the thought that's gone into this. It's definitely an aircraft that's been designed to be printed as opposed to something that's been converted. In the front of the aircraft, in the cowling, there's a really nice battery hatch, plenty of space. Well, there's going to be plenty of space once it's all together for your battery and radio gear. The motor mount, um, Everything on this aircraft is pretty much printed apart from things like steel push rods. The motor mount, I have ordered some different material because it suddenly came to me that motors can get pretty warm and I thought that maybe a carbon fibre PETG material uh, would be a much better material to print a motor mount in. So hopefully that material arrives soon and I can get that part printed. Other things to mention, Although it's taken 48 hours to print of my actual own time, putting the files onto the SD card and putting them in the printer, you're probably looking at an hour or two tops of my own time actually getting to this stage. So it's kind of a print and forget process. Uh, a lot of these parts I pressed print and then woke up in the morning to them being ready. So it's quite, it's quite nice in that respect. And of course, if you damage something, so you, you break a cowling, you can come home and just press print and you'll have a new cowling. Um, I've chosen silver to, to print this in, but you can obviously get this material in pretty much any color. You can get glow in the dark, you can get ones that change color from different angles. So you could really get creative. As it's my first go, I thought I would just stick to one color for every component, but maybe I will change that on the next one. Talking of the next one, the guys over at Eclipton Aircraft have just released an EDF model as well. And given that every member of the Essential RC team has an EDF, we're pretty keen to, to fly EDF, so it's definitely something we're gonna be interested in. Uh, in the next video, I will be gluing all of these components together and installing radio gear. So make sure you subscribe down below to get notified of when the next video comes out and you will see me gluing everything together, putting the radio gear in, putting the motor in, the speed controller, all of those parts we'll be putting in and getting it ready for flying. And we will see how easy it goes together from from these bits to one aircraft. You do just use Sino. I'm gonna use thick Sino um, to glue everything together and some activator. There's no spar in the wing, so it has printed, in essence, a spar in the wing, and it just glues together. There's tabs to, to make sure everything lines up. So that's about it from this episode. Um, make sure you press the like and subscribe button down below and if you are interested in episode two where we put this together then uh, I will see you in the next video but apart from that thanks for watching this episode of Essential RC and we'll see you soon.